All right, well, good evening and welcome to uh, the Elementary Palisade Cyber Academy presentation or information session, as it were. Uh, my name is Dr. Michael Donnelly. I'm the Director of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment for the Palisade School District. And also on this call, we have Ms. Janet Link, who is our Principal of Tinicum Elementary School. And she and I are working closely together this year, uh, specifically with the elementary cyber component of the program as one of our goals, uh, as we work to try to provide the best of an education as we can uh, for our elementary kiddos. Uh, who aren't joining us face to face. Uh, so thanks to our, our, our uh, colleagues out there who are joining this call. Thank you so much for logging in this evening. Uh, as I mentioned a few moments ago, we are recording tonight's presentation so that we can post it on our website for any uh, individual who's unable to join us. Uh, and the purpose for this evening uh, really is to provide for anyone on the call um, just another overview of what we're offering in our cyber, cyber school program for our elementary school students. Um, and I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where on the website you can find information, uh, what some of that specific information is. We'll review what the schedule looks like, um, pick out some key points from our presentation that we made in August for, by way of orientation. And then what I'll do is I'll turn it over to Ms. Link so she can share some anecdotes, some, some things that she's been able to observe from students and from teachers throughout the first semester regarding our program. And at that point, uh, anyone on the call, if you have some questions that you'd like to ask for the good of the group, uh, you'd be able to do so at that time uh, by pressing star six uh, to unmute yourself. Uh, and um, that's how we will that's how we'll go about it. So again, uh, thank you so much for joining this evening and we'll go ahead and get, and get started. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen for you at this point in time. Uh, I know if you're calling in, you're not able to see that, but this will be able to capture it in our video we'll have. Um, but we want to share with you um, where you can go for information about our Cy Palisade Cyber Academy, uh, which is on the district website. So when you go to the district website, um, palisd.org, um, you'll be able to click on the tab that indicates our district. And then under our district, all of our categories are alphabetized. And you'll see there in the third column, Palisade Cyber Academy. So when you click on that, that link, uh, it'll take you to a website that we've been working on developing over the course of the fall to serve as a one-stop shop for information regarding our Cyber Academy programs. We offer um, different iterations at each of our levels, which is why to this evening we're having three sessions, uh, one for each, so one elementary, middle, and high school. And so uh, rather than clicking on every tab for you, as you can navigate that on your own, I did want to share with you, we did try to include more information this year as we're continuing to increase and add volume to our programs that we're offering for our students in our current reality to allow for families to have an understanding of what we're doing to work with our boys and girls and young ladies and gentlemen to teach them as best we can in our current reality. So as you can see here, there's some information about what the Palace Cyber Academy is. Um, we've have information sessions that we've archived. And again, this is where we'll put tonight's presentation as well. We've included some resources for families about online learning, as well as a link to our curriculum. Uh, one of the key factors of the Palisade Cyber Academy is that we offer and provide the 100% same curriculum that we offer to our students in the face-to-face -face classroom. Uh, that's one of our key points of our program. Uh, in, in addition to that, 100% of our elementary school students in the Cyber Academy are being educated by Palisades teachers. So they are receiving the education as same as they would if they were in the classroom with their face-to-face -face peers, simply though in a virtual setting. So that, that we, we really um, are sharing that information because that's an important part of what we do in Palisades to ensure that our, our students are getting the very best education that they can, again, whether they're face-to-face -face or virtual. We do have Cyber Academy deans uh, and our elementary or our K through eight cyber dean is Mr. Joel Filling. He's at the middle school. And Mr. Filling's position really um, is, is focused around our third party vendors. Uh, as I mentioned, um, all of our students at the elementary level um, have the opportunity to take and have their courses taught by Palisades teachers. And so really uh, Mr. Filling's position this year is more focused at the middle level uh, in working through some of those programs there. Again, just as you can see on the on, when you go to the website, we just have different links in it as a way to, to provide access and support for families when it comes to learning online, some helpful hints, uh, as well as what policies are, attendance, things like that, that you may need to know and refer to over time. A separate link for secondary students, as our secondary students become more individualized, independent in their work, they're able to use those links to access the different sites that they would use for their learning. And then finally, we recently added a, a section called testimonials, families, uh, which we shared out. So we did uh, get some really nice comments from our families regarding 
our Cyber Academy program so far. Uh, this is a learning curve for all of us, it's a learning curve for you. Again, kudos to our Palisades community, our families, our students, and of course, our entire district of, of employees uh, working together to, to uh, keep numbers down as best as possible uh, with this virus, so we can continue to educate our students as best we can. And we appreciate the flexibility uh, that, that our families have offered us uh, in working with them and working with our students and providing uh, what we believe to be the very best education we can given our current situation. So that website is a place for you to go to. Uh, again, from the from the homepage there under our district, click on Palisade Cyber Academy, and it's there you can find the information that you would need um, and, and, and more uh, when it comes to online learning. For the purposes of, of this group, for our elementary students, I briefly wanted to share with you again, what does it look like and what our schedule looks like? So on the screen for uh, when you're able to view that, and again, this is also uh, located online on that website, is our Palisade Cyber Academy daily schedule. So in addition to the fact that um, all of our students at the elementary level are able to be taught by Palisades teachers and have the Palisades curriculum as part of their program, we also um, have what's called a, a, what we believe to be a good balance of synchronous and asynchronous learning. Synchronous, of course, meaning live learning or face-to-face -face or uh, live face-to-face -face, as it were virtually. Uh, and asynchronous, of course, meaning independent or, or lessons that are, that are, that are pre-taped or, or, or viewed at a different time or at a time in which the student can work on it. So what we worked through at our, as part of our elementary academy was one to make sure that we had daily touch points with our students. It's so very important to continue to maintain those relationships as best we can to create that classroom environment as best we can. Our teachers are doing a phenomenal job with that. And again, I'll have Ms. Link share some observations that she's made so far. Uh, but what we've done is our students in our elementary program log into their Chromebooks every morning at 9 a.m. and our teachers take attendance like they would in the face-to-face -face classroom and then they conduct a, a morning meeting just like they would as a class in face-to-face. -face. Um, and during that morning meeting they talk about you know pertinent issues that are impacting the class, uh, concerns or questions that the students might have, or maybe they'll have um, a, a challenge or a positive behavior report. Um, so it's just a time for the students to come together to get their day started and set themselves off on the right foot. Sometimes those meetings go a little bit longer. And again, just like they would face-to-face, -face, it's all about flexibility. Directly from there, our students stay online where they have uh, what's called a whole group uh, um, reading lesson. So our teachers are able to work through that read aloud or a small lesson in, in the area of reading and language arts. And then after that time, our students are given a break. And then they have time where teachers are pulling small groups to work through leveled readers um, based on where the students are in that class and where they are in their reading level, as well as other activities that the teacher may assign for students to work on independently. Through the rest of the schedule, we did, we did build in a lunch and recess hour. Um, and then the next time that the students are back online as a full class together is at 1245. So again, for 30 minutes in the middle of the day, all of our students log back in, attendance is taken, uh, and this way students are counted then for a full day of school. And then the teacher conducts a math mini lesson, just like she would in the face-to-face -face classroom. And again, from there, after that time, again, may go a little bit longer, uh, depending on the material that's being taught. Uh, but then students are broken down into small groups. And teachers provide asynchronous or independent level work for students to work on, assignments. Uh, and it's during that time as well that teachers will call small groups, uh, maybe have breakout rooms, which is a great addition to Google Meets, uh, and have students working collaboratively together on their material. And that will remain the way, that way for the rest of the day for their what I need period, where they may receive extension activities or intervention activities, perhaps uh, speech language, or uh, occupational therapy, physical therapy, sort of all those different uh, resources that we provide in our school settings um, may happen during that win time or at other times of the day as well. And then we also offer our science and social studies and our specials through an asynchronous lens as well, where teachers have lessons that they've taped for students to access. Uh, we recognize that, that, that while our student day in this schedule matches our student day insofar as the amount of time face-to-face, uh, -face, we also recognize that it is a challenge to be in front of a computer for, for that long. And so that's why we do provide a number of breaks as well as um, independent work time for students so that if as a family it's decided that a student needs to take a longer break uh, and it's not during a live lesson, that maybe he or she, the student might work on something at four o'clock or maybe they might not uh, work on it until after dinner. Uh, and that's a different, that's a decision for the family to make. Uh, but what we try to do is balance that time so that we can ensure that our students are present, 
we are required by Pennsylvania Department of Education uh, to offer a full day, uh, which is what we have devised with our schedule here, uh, and also to hold um, our students accountable, just like we would if they were face-to-face, -face, which is why we take attendance first thing in the morning and then again in the afternoon, uh, so that we're able to then demonstrate that students are present and actively participating in the lessons. And that was a, a conversation piece that we had over the summer to try to do what we could to create an, an opportunity to build relationships with our students and our teachers in a way that is unique to other cyber programs that, um, that families may have selected. Um, and so with that said, just as a brief overview, uh, we did present in late August an orientation for families who had selected to participate in the Palisade Cyber Academy. Again, this presentation is available on that website, so I won't read through everything for you, uh, but it is a neat space for you to go to if you're interested to learn more about each of the teachers. Uh, our, each of our teachers, kindergarten through fifth grade, um, have a slide with their pictures on it and their names, as well as an, a, a link to a welcome letter to welcome families and students to their classrooms. And those are still available uh, in that presentation on the website. Uh, so if you're interested, please feel free to take a few minutes to view that. Our elementary teachers also came together to make a quick uh, video uh, to a Flipgrid to sh share students to say hello and put a, a face and a name and a smile together and a voice, uh, and also to demonstrate for students how to use that really neat tool, uh, which many of our teachers have integrated in their classroom experiences uh, through that Flipgrid opportunity. Of course, as you know, we have three elementary schools in our district and each of our principals is working with teachers that are housed in their buildings uh, as teachers are coming in to get work done, to, to take live videos, et cetera. And so we've listed that for folks as well. And again, our daily schedule, we explain that a little bit uh, more in detail, uh, similar to what I just shared with that other infographic um, to explain the difference between a live or a synchronous lesson versus an asynchronous or not live or independent lesson. Again, uh, attendance is compensatory. It's required in Pennsylvania, uh, just as it were for face-to-face. -face. Again, so we do take attendance first thing in the morning and again at the middle of the day. In that presentation, we talk about supplies that our students uh, are gonna need and a pickup time uh, for families who are selecting to, to come back to Palisades and, and join us for the Cyber Academy. Uh, we will uh, be uh, communicating in January um, another opportunity for pickup of supplies. Uh, and that'll be for all of our students at the Cyber Academy, uh, students currently enrolled, as well as those who will be joining and coming back to us. Uh, and so we'll make that announcement in January once we have a better sense of what our programming will be uh, in so far as numbers and where students will be um, in, in their buildings and classes. Uh, so it talks about supply pickup. Uh, we do share, uh, again, for you to review uh, if you are interested in some tips and tricks for at-home learning spaces. Uh, we provided some information there for, for families as well. Uh, again, remembering back to August, which seems like forever ago, uh, this is all totally brand new for everybody and so fun and to do what we could to provide that resource uh, for families to kind of get a sense of what it could look like uh, in setting up that space at home for, for their students. Um, we do use Google, uh, Google Classroom in the district, um, both for face-to-face -face students as well as our, our cyber students. Uh, and so we do have a link to the video for some tricks and tips for uh, students and families when it comes to using that. Uh, and I can share with you that our, our students are very quite adept at navigating Google Classroom, whether there are our little itty bitties in kindergarten or our much older students in fifth grade, uh, they're doing a really nice job of navigating this, this um, virtual uh, learning, teaching and learning uh, environment. And just finally, we concluded our presentation to share that, you know, at, you know, at that point in time, um, our students are coming back to us after having had an absence from school for a few months due to the closures. Uh, and while we recognize and, and celebrate each of our individual school communities, we also wanted everyone to know that uh, for those students coming together for the Cyber Academy, that um, that individual connection to their home building won't be lost. Uh, but at the same time, they're coming together and they're, they're, they are Palisades Pirates because we're all in this together. Uh, and so um, that's, that was our presentation that we made um, back in August and, and it remains uh, consistent today with, the, with what we're doing in our classrooms. Um, and so with that said, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to turn it over to this link uh, to share a few uh, thoughts, comments, uh, and, and, and observations that she's made uh, throughout this uh, first semester. I want to thank you. I want to thank you all for joining us tonight um, and taking part in learning more about our Palisade Cyber Program. 
Um, as Dr. Donnelly shared, there's lots of things we're proud of. I have the opportunity to meet with the team uh, weekly, as does Dr. Donnelly. Also have the chance to pop into classrooms, virtual classrooms, and uh, see what's going on in there and keep an eye on the children's achievements. So um, one thing we're really proud of is the teacher quality. Uh, Palisades is always proud of its teachers. Uh, we chose teachers carefully for this program. Um, to be able to provide what we thought would be the best remote instruction for our students. They're not letting us down. They are amazing. Um, they are growing and learning as a team every day, and they're already pretty wonderful. Um, other thing that hits me when I pop into those classrooms is there's a sense of community. When I go into a face-to-face -face classroom, of course, I see 15 or 20 kids seated around the classroom. When I go into the virtual classroom, I see 15, 20 kids on the screen, but they're chatting just like our kids chat uh, in the morning at school, talking about what they did, what they're going to learn that day, doing their morning meeting. I know even some new friendships have been formed by the kids in our virtual classrooms because they're getting to meet children from other schools they wouldn't necessarily meet uh, where they face to face in our school, but some friendships have been formed. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, perhaps maybe what I'm most proud of is that these classrooms are teaching the Palisades curriculum and using uh, our Palisades assessments to monitor the children's progress. Important again, because we chose our curriculum so carefully, uh, we want our kids to learn everything they can learn and provide them with the best possible curriculum. We wanna measure their learning to make sure that we're meeting everybody's needs and not letting children fall behind. So um, that piece is going very well. And it's nice that our children have all the manipulatives that go with our, our teaching uh, materials as well, like our foundations program where the children move their letter tiles in grades K, one and two, how they're learning to sound out and decode words, our math manipulatives that go with everyday math as we learn harder concepts such as fractions. They have all that at their fingertips. Um, we're as proud of our social emotional learning as we are our academic learning and all the students in our cyber classrooms also participate in our second step social emotional curriculum instructed by their, their Palisade cyber teachers as well as our school counselors. So we're keeping that piece of learning going as well as the academic piece, which is something I, I don't believe that you always find um, in some of the charter cyber schools uh, that has been my experience. And of course, we watch every one of our children and we, we um, meet and problem solve about children who may be showing us an area of concern. So the children in our, in our cyber academy get support such as Title I reading instruction, um, the use of differentiated learning materials. If we think they need something a little bit different or on a slightly different level, just to give them a boost, we get that for them. And um, the team. Uh, the team is not that teacher by themselves. The team is that whole school team that's behind every one of our children trying to figure out what's the best way to teach this child. How can we get them learning and involved in school? Um, and so the access to the school support services is really important to me. I think that's really terrific. And one thing that I know when I go into a classroom that we know makes a really effective teacher is the feedback loop. A child can't um, learn as quickly if they're not getting fairly immediate and fairly accurate feedback about the work that they're doing because it helps them form the new concepts correctly in their, in their heads and in their minds. And so what I look for, not just in, in a face-to-face -face classroom, but in our remote and virtual classrooms is teachers making that feedback loop work as quickly as they can. And I see a lot of that. I'll see a teacher teach a face-to-face -face lesson for a half an hour, have an idea that there are a couple kids who based on the engagement they've shown so far in the work aren't quite at that concept. They'll say, stay with me for a little bit longer while the rest, everybody else goes on to uh, complete the assignment. And even if I don't call your name, if you wanna stay, you're welcome to stay with me as well so that you can get more secure in this concept. And so it, it's that personal touch, it's the quality of the curriculum yeah, excellent teaching and being part of the Palisades community, um, not just with their remote uh, instruction, their virtual instruction, but also part of the elementary school. They join us for school-wide assemblies, for celebrations and things like that, um, just to keep the connection going. So that's been my experience so far. Um, if you ever want to reach out, I'm on the website and feel free to email or give me a call if, if you uh, want to talk more about our Cyber Academy, but I'm really proud of how far we've come so far and the quality of instruction that's being offered to our students who are enrolled there. Great.
Thank you so much, Ms. Link. And so as a reminder to everyone on the call and anyone viewing this at a later time, um, actually just this afternoon, uh, Donna Holmes, our Director of Community Relations, sent out uh, an update for December with a few uh, helpful links and reminders, one of which is that survey uh, that if there are families who are looking to make a switch from their current mode of instruction, so whether that is to be a current in within Palisades and move from face-to-face -face into the Palisades Cyber Academy, or vice versa, as well as for any family um, who may not be in the Palisades School District at this time, um, having been in a cyber charter school, um, you know, you're also able to fill out that survey. If you did not receive that survey because you are currently in a cyber charter school, please, as, as Ms. Link said, feel free to reach out to either one of us or to Donna Holmes directly, and we can help to give you the information that you need in order to um, essentially re-register with the district and join us. Uh, again, whether you select to join us with Palisade Cyber Academy or if you'd like to um, potentially come back as a face-to-face -face learner as well. Um, so again, uh, thank you so much for, for participating this evening. And at this time, if there's anyone on the call who does have a question that they feel would be appropriate for the good of the group, uh, go ahead and if you would like to unmute, I believe it's star six to do so. All right. Well, I believe that was sufficient wait time. Uh, but again, as Ms. Link said to reiterate, we're, we're available um, at all times. Uh, so if you do have individual questions that you would like to ask, concerns, uh, anything that you would like to talk with us about, please don't hesitate in reaching out to either one of us, both of us, uh, and we can do our very best to support you and your and your learners uh, as we can. And one, again, want to thank you for taking time to join us this evening for this presentation. And I will stop recording and uh, wish you all a very pleasant evening. Stay warm. Thank you again. Thank you again.